What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Community Voices. Today, we got a very special guest, a good friend of mine, Nicole Russell. Some of our accolades include how to write it, write it down a whole piece of paper. We got Glamour Mag, Everyday Hero of the Year, Essential Hero of the Year for Essence Magazine. She's been featured on Oprah, the Today Show, Forbes, Walmart Community Playmaker Award. Welcome and thank you for joining us, Nicole. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, I'm excited as well. So I feel I feel the energy. I know it's going to be a good conversation. So tell the people about who you are exactly and what the work you do. Yeah, so I am the first and foremost. Um, the thing that I'm most proud of, I, I would say, is that I'm the co-founder and executive director of the Precious Dreams Foundation. Mm -hmm. um, it's the work that I'm most known for. It's a nonprofit that provides services to children and young adults in foster care or living in homeless shelters. Um, and that's an organization that I started in New York in 2012. And now we have chapters all across the United States. Um, so that is what I do full time. And then I'm from New York. So of course, you know, I'm getting multiple bags. <laughs> I, have a, I started a business a few years ago called Pitch House. And through Pitch House, it allows me to support other nonprofits and help people either start their own nonprofits or create social impact initiatives. So running my own org, helping other people start and run their orgs. And then on top of all of that, I am a writer, I am a creative, um, and I have a deep passion for writing for children nice so let's get into the pitch house right so i think i read online you talk you work with different companies on how they could work with like the community better or something along those lines right so take us through that kind of work yeah so i, I think a lot of people have great intention um and as you know there are a lot of corporations out there that at this point in 2021 um have to face their employees and and stand for the things that matter to them um, and put those dollars where their mouths are, right? So a lot of these corporations are looking for ways to show up in the community um, to support specific groups and they don't necessarily know how. And a lot of times um, what we do with Pitch House is, is truly go into those communities and, and meet with those change makers, meet with the people who are doing the work locally whether it is through social work, um, through community centers, um, the people who are running grassroots organizations, and we ask them what resources and tools they need um, to, to better enrich their neighborhoods. And um, we start by, by bridging the gap between the corporation um, and those who are doing the work on the grounds level. Um, and then from there, we build out bigger programming so that we can help those people scale and grow their nonprofits, um, but also answer the demands of the community um, and, and help people with the things that they actually need and that they're asking for. Um, so there are no assumptions in the type of work that we do. Yeah, I feel like a lot of companies just in general can definitely use those services, especially as I feel like more, especially today, like more community impact is necessary for these brands. So for any brands out there watching, definitely tap in with Nicole and, you know, get your, get your stuff right. So. Yeah, and, certainly. And one thing I would just add to that is like, if you are trying to come up with a solution to support any community, um, that solution should never start and end in a boardroom. You know, you really have to tap in with the people in order to figure out um, what will, um, be sustainable, but will also have the longest impact. Definitely, definitely. And the next question for you, I know you're a writer, so take us through some of the, the, the books you've been working on and what inspires you as a writer? Yeah, so crazy enough, um, I don't even think you know this. I, uh, most people don't know this. So I have been writing my whole life. I used to write music. And I know that you interviewed Miguel before. So I actually co-wrote a song with Miguel. Oh, wow. So, yeah, so my writing started in music many moons ago. Now and, it makes sense, the, the connection, so. Mm -hmm, yeah. yeah, and so now I write for children. Obviously, I am very passionate about helping our most vulnerable. And so my first book, Everything a Band-Aid Can't Fix, is a teen and young adult self-help guide. Mm -hmm. And I have a new book coming out next week. It's a children's book called My Busy, Busy Brain. So with all of the materials that I am creating and all of the resources, um, the overall objective is really to teach young people how to advocate for themselves 
at any age, no matter what it is, um, whether they're advocating for themselves or their communities. Um, I really want to empower them and equip them with the tools that they need um, to just open their mouths and get that conversation started. Yeah, and I feel like now with people just being inside because of like the pandemic, like I guess, especially kids, more times to actually read and, you know, get their mind right. So these books is yours, especially the ones that help the, the youth, definitely very important. So thank you, you for, for putting that together. And um, lastly for you, and probably the most important one to me, at least, is the Precious Dreams Foundation. So talk about how that came into fruition and the work you've been doing through the Precious Dreams Foundation to help like the black and brown community. Yeah, so um, as I mentioned earlier, I started this organization in 2012 and I was inspired by my little sister who came to live with my family when she was four. Mm -hmm. And my sister used to suffer from nightmares seven nights a week. And at that point, I, I was a young adult. I never thought about what children in foster care, what their experience is like at bedtime. And I never thought about kids or teenagers living in homeless shelters, what their bedtime experience would be like, um, how uncomfortable that might be or what they do to get back to sleep after having a bad dream. Right. And so my mother and I ended up starting the organization as a passion project. We simply wanted to gather some comfort tools and make donations. And within the first year, I just became so passionate about what we were doing that we started growing out programming and then putting boards together and um, building out programs where we could have volunteers all across the states. And today um, we are serving through teaching yoga, meditation. We bring in guest speakers um, that share relatable stories, whether they have been in their shoes at some point or they are simply people who have just dealt with um, a lot of adversity, you know, and that they have a story to tell. We all have a story to tell. Um, but a lot of times the young people that we work with, they look at these celebrities and think that um, they've had it easy at some point or they had a handout. So um, we try to we try to connect them with people that they wouldn't typically get to meet. Just a couple of weeks ago, we had Meta World Peace and we had Tiffany Haddish jump on a Zoom with like 250 youth in LA who are currently in foster care. And they were just taking questions and letting them just fire off and ask anything that they wanted. Mm -hmm. So that was really cool. Um, as far as serving black and brown children, um, as you would know, black people in general do not make up the highest population in the United States, um, but they make us, they make up for a very large population of the youth that are transitioning through the foster care system. And there are over 400,000 children transitioning through the foster care system. Um, in New York, which is where I live, I'm going into shelters in the Bronx and the Brooklyn in Brooklyn and Queens, where we're seeing 100% black children in these shelters. Yeah. Um, and they are also the least likely to get adopted and find a permanent home, mm -hmm. um, which is the biggest challenge, right? So there are so many systems that were not created for black people to thrive um, in life, but to have this broken foster care system where so easily a child can get, can get removed from their home um, and then end up transitioning through this cycle of sometimes abuse, sometimes unhealthy situations. And they're going through all of that. And when they turn 18 or 21 and they, um, when they age out of foster care, they're just expected to do well, to be well, um, to get a job, to go to college. And it's almost impossible for some of the children that we work with who, who just don't have the support that many of us do. Um, so it's, it's quite a challenge, the work that we're doing, but I am so invested and so is my team because um, we're not only trying to help kids transition in um, foster care and make it more comfortable, we've now created programming where we help them transition out. So um, sorry if I'm talking too much. We have something called the Humble Dreams Initiative. And it's a cohort where we provide scholarships, um, whether that is for college or for entrepreneurial goals. Mm -hmm. um, and outside of those scholarships, we also have accountability partners, mentors, and we really work closely with these young people um, to help them feel like someone is going to be there if they fall again. Yeah. And so, I mean, I feel like it's crucial, especially to go in that system. Uh, fortunately, like, I don't know what it is, but I can only imagine like not being adopted just because of like your skin color and then 
that kind of like trials and tribulations you go through going in and out of system where you're going to a home and then you go into the next home and then going back to like, you know, foster care and then going to the next place and there's nothing real permanent. I can only imagine like how that affects the psyche of kids, just seeing that, you know, this friend may not want me, this person might not want to adopt me. So I feel like the work you're doing, even though I feel like it might not get enough of, what's the word I'm looking for, like recognition as far as like what's going on in the foster care, you know, it affects so many kids. So yeah, thank you for, for that work, man, because it goes a long way. Thank you. Thank you for um, just helping me spread awareness. Like any opportunity that I have to speak on behalf mm -hmm. of our young people and just inspire other people to tap into this space, whether it's with Precious Dreams or another organization in their local community that is serving youth in, in foster care or even youth currently experiencing homelessness. Like they need love, they need programming, they need support. So um, thank you, Omar, for having me. Yeah, of course. And you know, I said JD Sports and Finish Line. You know, that's the whole goal of community voices help spread awareness and, you know, put our money where our mouth is and help, you know, affect the impact the community that, you know, supports us. So that being said, uh, we'd like to donate 20000 to the Precious Dreams Foundation to help continue the amazing work you've been doing. And, you know, we can't thank, thank you enough you. for participating in this and on top of that, more importantly, helping the kids out. So. Thank you so much. Wow. Um... I don't have words <laughs> right now, <laughs> but that's, um, that's such a blessing. I guess that's the best way that I can describe it. So thank you so much. Now you got to share that blessing with the other kids. So and I'm sure there are even something small going on. Absolutely, like. absolutely. And we will, and anytime that you or the team want to come out and volunteer, you are more than welcome. So thank you. I'll hold you to that. <laughs> Cool, but yeah, that's a wrap. Thank you again for joining us for this episode of Community Voices. And yeah, I'll let you have uh, the last word. Um, I will just say thank you to you and everyone at Finish Line. Um, thank you for, for spotlighting Community Voices in the first place. Um, it is, it's just, it's a beautiful thing to be able to share the work. Um, so many people are doing the work quietly. Um, a lot of great people are doing the work quietly and so, um, what you're doing is so important. So hats off to you for that. And if anybody wants to get involved, they can find us at, at Precious Dreams Foundation on social or preciousdreamsfoundation.org. Amazing. Cool. Well, that's a wrap. Thank you to everybody for tuning in and thank you for most importantly, Nicole, for joining us today. Thank you. Cool. All right. So next time.